I do get a lot of hate. I have received a lot of backlash. Am I about to expose GOAT? What's up, Busta fam? A lot of people don't know, but Sneaker YouTube, it has a really big following. Some of us have over like a million subscribers. Since sneaker hype has gone up so much, fakes have also gone up with that. It's actually a very dark blue. You really need to know what you're looking for. Stitching on the inside is correct. A lot of people have their mixed opinions on what I do. People think that like, I bully or I harass people, or they think that what I do is pointless. Come on, bro. Th what are those? But in my opinion, you can get scammed, and even your favorite celebrities can get scammed. That's kind of why I stepped in and helped people uh, legit check their sneakers so they can make sure that they're buying something real. I really want to use my platform and my influence to help spread sneaker culture and show people that it's just more than just a pair of shoes. It's a lifestyle. Every shoe has a story behind it. I am Yeezy Busta, and I call out celebrities for wearing fake stuff. I'm a YouTuber, an Instagram influencer, I guess. I don't show my face, I don't tell people my real name because of specific legal reasons that I had to deal with in the past. Now it's just kind of become part of my image. What is up, Busta fam? If you're new here, I'm Yeezy Busta, and if you've been around, I appreciate you guys. Busta fam about to be the strongest family on all of YouTube. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. There we go. This is my first pair of like hype sneakers, my first pair of Yeezys. Still one of my favorite shoes. Pirate Black V1, and there it is. The original, the OG. These were actually the shoes that I did my research on and saved up a bunch of money from my job at Starbucks to be able to afford them. This shoe is a thing that kind of inspired Yeezy Busta and really helped me gain a lot of knowledge about Yeezys. This is definitely the shoe that started it all. I've caught so many different people wearing fakes. It's a long list of celebrities. A lot of the times they don't know, a lot of times they do know, but it's been everybody from Rich the Kid all the way up until like people like Zac Efron. I've caught Soldier Boy at least six times. <laughs> Growing up, my family had like nothing. Parents immigrated to the States when I was super young with 200 bucks. I didn't have many toys. I didn't have much of anything. I'm almost 22 now. I've been paying for all my own stuff since I was like, 18 and a half. My car, everything you see behind me, no, it's not mommy and daddy's money. E even after my parents started, you know, doing well, they didn't really ever give me anything. My first pair of Yeezys was a pair of turtle doves, but they were fake. My dad bought them for me as a birthday present, and I didn't know that they were fake, so I, of course, put them straight to feet. I actually went to the mall, and some little kid was like, nice Yeezys, dude, and I was like, thanks. They're like, ha, fake, and I was like, what? Like, no, these aren't fake. I brought the shoe home. I was really confused. That's when I started like educating myself on like what's real and what's fake. The first thing we're gonna look at is the box. The authentic box is slightly larger than the fake box. If you notice any imperfection, they're most likely fake. I kind of became like a little bit of a Yeezy connoisseur at that point because for every one pair of real ones, there's like 20 fakes. Unfortunately, they're fake. Pretty much everywhere I went, whenever I saw anybody wearing a pair of Yeezys, I'm like, ah, those are real. You know, those are fake. <laughs> the suede patch feels right. The Adidas logo is heat printed into the suede patch. With the early fakes, it was so easy to tell with just the pattern on the shoe, like the actual design. The early fakes weren't doing the patterns correctly. But to confirm it, I want to make sure that I look at the pattern on both. I was like checking Reddit and a bunch of forums and seeing fakes, and I, I bought a lot of fakes at the time to compare them. Besides from the stitching pattern, the outsole would be like the same width throughout the whole shoe, whereas on the real ones, it was a little bit thinner in the front, got a little bit thicker in the back. Boost is on point. With every shoe, it has its own telltale sign. These are legit, 100% legit. I always told myself I would not call someone out unless I was 1,005% sure that they were fake because obviously I wouldn't want to get myself into trouble. So now guys, with all that said, I do have to say that these are 100% easy bus to verify. In order for me to get the confidence, it took me a while, it took a lot of research. And I was really into this page called Fake Watch Busta, where he called out people like Soldier Boy who were wearing fake watches. 
So I thought it would be funny to make a page called Fake Easy Bust Up. It started with like people in my school and then it kind of expanded into celebrities and that's when it really took off. And it kind of went viral like the first day, like within 10 hours, like Complex wrote an article about it. I kind of started figuring out YouTube and then I realized I could monetize this whole thing and now it's like my whole life. So I had like a series where I did like Easy Busted. Let me find the Soldier Boy one. Soldier Boy? Soldier Boy? You mean the dude that I exposed like six times with a fake watch or fake Yeezy, fake house, fake cars, fake pregnancy? What else is there that's fake from this dude? This is the interview where he said, fuck Yeezy Busters. Fuck, uh, who the that's for? Yeezy Busters. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of folks, man. With celebrities, nine out of 10 times, they're really cool. They'll just slide in my DM and be like, hey man, had no idea. There's always that one guy out of every like 10 or so that just gets furious, start like threatening me. He's definitely fake. The hate like really got to me. But over time, I've really developed thick skin and I realized that haters are just a normal part of what I'm doing. People think that like, I bully or I harass people or they think that what I do is pointless, but a lot of money that's made from fake stuff is circulating in like drugs and sex trafficking. A lot of fake factories use child labor, for example. Because it's illegal, a lot of illegal businesses use it to their advantage. And it made me realize that fake stuff is so much more than just like some random dude wearing a fake pair of shoes. It's like a lot deeper than that. He was wearing fake Yeezys. It's so easy to get the fakes. If you go on Google and you just search the word Yeezy, some good websites pull up, like Stadium Goods is great, Goat. Oh, like right here. Like this is like on Google Shopping. If you click on it, it'll take us to like this random website. I don't even want to promote these guys, but they're selling these for 97 bucks. I guarantee you what you get in the mail will not look like this. They have all these sizes from men's US 10 and they have a women's US 9. Like, Yeezys don't even come in women's sizes. There's like this whole subculture within sneaker culture that only likes fake stuff. This is replica sneakers on Reddit. Essentially, it's just like a forum of like people posting videos saying, hey, I just bought it from this counterfeit website. You guys should buy it too because they're good fakes. Like, look, this is like the factory where they produce the fake cactus plant flea markets. That's, an, that's like a $1,000 shoe in my size. And, you know, look at them producing all these fakes. By buying a fake, you are contributing to an illegal market. It is illegal to buy fakes. It is illegal to own fakes. It's just not worth it. It's like my dream car since I was like a kid. I'm really happy that I'm able to be in a position where I can afford it. I do get a lot of keyboard warrior comments. I realize that there are people out there to get me. I really didn't think those people would have been complex because they have been so cool to me for three years. And without them, I really wouldn't be where I am today if they didn't write that article about me. Folks, welcome back to another episode of Full Size Run. Full Size Run is a show on complex. And two of the hosts were supposedly good friends of mine, but they decided to be a little bit shady. They invited me on the show. They're like, hey, we'd really love to have you on the show. We don't have a budget. We're just starting. Like, would you mind helping us out? And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, it's the least I could do because the complex did so much for me. I flew myself out with my own money and put myself in a hotel with my own money. You know, they told me that we were gonna legit check some sneakers. That these are real. They got the best fakes on the market. I remember when I was sitting there looking at it, I was like, this is really tough. How many people are buying fakes? Are they really? They're back as shit. I truly did not spend enough time looking at the shoe and I got one of them wrong. The hate that I was just getting bombarded by was just ridiculous. I went off of social media for like two weeks. I corrected myself, but the way they edited it just made me look so bad. And they like clearly had an agenda to make me look bad. And my full size run episode has the most views out of all of them. So I know why they did it. They got their clicks. <sighs> it's really hard to talk about, but it's like at the end of the day, like I don't want to make an excuse. I got it wrong. I should have spent more time on it. And I've grown a lot since then. Right now, we are headed to Project Blitz. It is a undisclosed location in LA. Project Blitz is started by my really good friend, Dre. He's like, your OG's OG resellers. 
Yo, Buster, what's good? <laughs> yeah, good to see you here. The stuff here will blow your mind. He's got some like the biggest name shopping here, like Drake, Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner, Tyga, and like pretty much any celebrity you can name has probably been here. So this is kind of where most of the sneakers are held. To actually come here is kind of like a privilege in the sneaker community. So now we're gonna go to the best part of Project Blitz, the vault. The vault just itself, like a tiny portion of this whole warehouse, is worth between three to four million dollars. There are shoes in here that literally only exist in this room. One of ones. These are the one of one nicknamed Ferrari Red Yeezy One sample, actually worn by Kanye. These are around $100,000. The Freddy Krueger Nike SB. Nike actually received a cease and desist from the studio. Nike was actually ordered to burn this shoe. Some employees or whoever was supposed to burn them stole a bunch of hairs. The right shoe has a lot more oil on it. I don't know who took it out of the burning pile, but it's pretty cool to know that this shoe was never supposed to come out. These shoes go for anywhere between five to $7,000. This is the Space Jam Jordan 11 from the movie Space Jam. Michael Jordan actually wore these in the movie. There's still dirt on them from the baseball scene. This shoe goes for upwards of $250,000. My fans like me to show really rare and exclusive sneakers because to them, to be able to see me hold it is like way different than it is to just see it on like a website or something. And like, I always do like reviews and stuff like that. Without Complex, I really wouldn't be where I am today if they didn't build me up to this thing. And I don't think that they shot me down completely. I got back up on my feet. My most recent video that I filmed here, I think, has 1.5 million views, which is really cool. <laughs> My whole intention wasn't to make people feel bad about what they're wearing. My whole intention was, look, you can get scammed, and even your favorite celebrities can get scammed. So be careful. And obviously, there's a fun aspect to it. For the most part, I try to make things educational. I don't think that people should just see the superficial side of me, which is just the expensive sneakers, the busting. That's so surface level. It has nothing to do with like my actual message and my business. And at the end of the day, if you're not controversial, if you're not doing something that has some sort of drama in it, most likely it's not gonna get big. I really wanna spread sneaker culture even more because a lot of kids will tell me like, hey, you inspired me to get into sneakers. So I really wanna use my platform and my influence to help spread sneaker culture. And I think that real versus fake should be like something that everybody should be educated about so they don't get scammed. I appreciate you guys and I'm gonna catch you next time.